Okay, so Devolver Digital are back with their latest release, Gumbrella, on the Nintendo Switch. And I've got to be honest, Glenn, I think the last few Devolver games haven't quite hit the mark for me. Okay, well, that's interesting to know. Let's uh, see if this one, which is developed by Doinksoft, fares any better. This one is an action platformer where you have a gun slash umbrella, hence the mm. name. So, Glenn, we've been handed Devolver's latest umbrella. We have, and we've opened it up and played it. But were raindrops falling on our head? Well, let's find out. So the story starts out in quite brutal fashion with the main character's family being massacred. Yep, at the scene of the crime he finds uh, a gun which is also an umbrella and he picks it up and takes it with him on a quest to find its owner and therefore the murderer. Now unbeknownst to me there's actually much more story and narrative in here than I thought there would be. There's lots of side characters, lots of side quests and it's not just shooting all the time. Yep, there's definitely some world building in here in terms of the information that you'll find out as you play along and the story itself without wanting to spoil anything does take a few twists and turns as you go on. Now gameplay wise, well, there are a few different elements here, aren't there? Yep, so it's first and foremost an action platformer with you needing to get through each stage taking on the enemies as you go by. You have that gun umbrella, obviously, and the way that works is that you can shoot it by pressing Y, but you can also press R to open it up and elevate yourself up across the stages. You also use the umbrella to deflect projectiles. It almost has a parry mechanic, where if you can time it just right, it will knock those back towards their source. As well as this, you can use it to dash and obviously block, and the floating mechanic is used to good effects, to be fair, to get across the stages, you'll find yourself at times using the umbrella almost as a, a zip line, and then you can jump off and float, missing out large chunks of the enemies as you go. Yeah, it does seem it's more than just a gimmick. It's used intrinsically in many of the gameplay elements. And being able to float down and then use the right analog stick for precision aiming, it's quite good once you get the hang of it, although it is a little fiddly, isn't it? It is a bit fiddly, and there are times where, say, for example, you want to float straight upwards and then shoot at an enemy to your left, but because the umbrella is facing upwards, it takes that moment to then reposition it and by then your chance is gone. Hmm. So it's a very good mechanic and it is used well. It's, it's certainly intrinsic, as you said, to the gameplay, although I do think there are just some teething problems with the logistics of having something that fires in one direction but flies in another, you know? There are numerous different types of enemies from humanoid to rats and several bosses and there are consumables to replenish your health, but they'll take a little while, so making sure you're in a good spot Spot is pretty important isn't it yeah so you'll need to uh, to eat it basically or apply it whatever it is and there's a little um, a little wheel above your head that needs to fill up before you're ready to go again the stages themselves are set out via a train system so you need to visit each town and when you get to a new town it may be that the train system is down for whatever reason and there's some sort of quest that you need to fulfill to obviously be able to move on to that next town there is a semi open world feel to it although it's not a metroidvania and there's no mapping system there are things like shops where you can buy and sell items and there does seem to be some choice in terms of what you can do you said you had a particular moment where you made a specific choice yeah so early on in the game you are tasked with having to save someone from a castle and someone gives you the key in exchange for you finding a rare gem that's inside somewhere earlier before this you meet someone in the sewers that says to you that they've had a gem stolen from them in the past hence the reason they now live where they live and you can make that choice after gaining it as to who you give it to and this obviously has consequences later on then we have the upgrades for the gumbrella now it isn't limited to just a shotgun yeah as well as the shotgun as standard you can find different bullets that obviously uh, change your rate of fire or change the potency of of the weapon but you can also find cogs that you can then use to upgrade specific areas of the weapon so for example it could be reload speed or it could be power and uh, i found this actually very useful i went for reload speed early on and fighting some of those bosses where you don't have such a delay between shots made a, a, a huge difference there's an element of risk or calculated risk and reward here in that your base ammo of the shotgun is unlimited and all the others have a very finite quantity. So to keep you up to speed as to what you have to do you have a quest log which you can access by pressing the minus button and you will take on various quests as you go along both main story quests and side quests as Mark mentioned earlier. Now for me the quest system or certainly the quest log anyway is one of the uh, the minor points of this game that I have a, a nitpick with and that's where the way that it's worded in terms of what you have to do is incredibly basic. Generally in games like this where your quest log is some sort of journal, it would say things like, you know, X asked me to do this. The last time they saw a certain item was in this area. Here it's literally just find the so-and-so. Now that's fine for the most part because the quests are quite simple and you won't often have to go too far back. But if you have any sort of gap between playing, coming back and looking at the quest you were currently on, it could be quite difficult to pick it back up. 
Yeah, we would also love to have seen the ability to play the game using the D-pad. Now, obviously, the D-pad is used for switching certain things, but there's no reason they couldn't have switched those over, so have the analog do what the D-pad does and vice versa. Overall, though, it is a very enjoyable game. I think this is probably one of Devolver's better releases in the last year or so. Yep, I'd second that. I think it's a lot of fun. It's nice how the world opens up as you go along. There's a, a nice pacing to it in terms of how many bosses you encounter. I think this is a well-crafted game for sure. So in terms of visuals, well, it has quite a grainy pixelated look, which I really think matches that dystopian tone of the game. Yeah, it seems to have gone for almost a merge of a Mad Max style with steampunk, which I think works very well. You can turn the film grain off or you can uh, lower its effects in the menu. And there's also a screen shake that you can have on or off. It's on by default, but I turned it off for the vast majority of this footage. Performance wise, it's very smooth. I didn't notice any lags. It looks to be around 60 FPS and load times are reasonably minimal. Yeah, but it also has that nice way of, of really accentuating detail, despite the fact it's using a style that some people consider a bit antiquated these days. Yeah, it's not easy creating that much character within a character that is literally made up of about 25 a pixels. A few pixels, exactly right, yeah. In terms of the audio, it's very appropriate for the action on screen. It works very well. Almost again has a, a bit of a Western feel to it at times, whilst in other areas feeling quite jazz based. Yeah. Sounds a bit odd, but it works very well. Yeah, I'd say it's quite understated. This yes. isn't like blowing your head off, is it? No, it uh, complements the gameplay. So value wise, Gunbrella will cost you £13.29 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Now for that price in terms of the level of polish and the size of the adventure, I think that's a very good deal. Yeah, that's bang on the money in terms of value in my opinion. And it's a really small download of about 900 megs. It's quite a challenging game, it must be said. And in terms of how long it may take you to finish, I think a fair region would be about 8 to 12 hours. I think that would cover most skill levels. Yeah, it's one of those where obviously there'll be people that can speed run their way through. But if you want to find all those secrets and do everything, then yeah, that's about right. To conclude, Gumbrella is a challenging game. It's got a good, clever mechanic that works very well for the most part. And the levels are a nice mix of action with a little bit of puzzle solving thrown in for good measure. There are a few minor quirks that don't work quite so well, but on the whole, this is definitely an adventure worth playing. it gets an overall switch up score of 84%. Thanks so much for watching. To all of you that enjoy the content, let us know what your thoughts are on this one. Save yourself a bit of money on your eShop credit using code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg, where you get 5% off instantly and 5% back in coins. Absolutely, there's also a link down there to Play Asia. If you're looking to import any games, use the link, use the code STATED, and there's 5% off of your order from there too. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.